is going on everybody welcome to another episode of country boys rc and today we've got packages in the shop uh one of these packages is for the beast the other two packages are for that kit that i've been mentioning uh being kind of secretive about the kit kind of keeping it under wraps on what the kit is that we're going to be doing uh for the winter build series but i decided one of the parts came in and once i show you the part it's going to kind of give it away so i figured i'd go ahead and just let you know what we are building for the winter series so to go ahead and kick off the show you see i've got the beast sitting in the background today i uh, was out driving it the other day i uh, found a spare motor out of an old cordless drill I threw it in there, really shouldn't have done it because the bearings in that motor or the bushings, whatever that motor has, they were starting to go bad and the motor had a lot of play in the shaft. Well, with all that play, it caused it to strip out the spur gear. So now that the beast is down, waiting on a spur gear and of course that motor not being any good, I decided to go ahead and order a motor for the beast something i knew would be good to run two twos with something i knew could handle the abuse of crawling uh going through water all types of stuff that i put the beast through uh so i got looking on ebay and i found a guy selling a brushed 540 can motor uh for a really good price for the actual brand that the motor is uh, he said it needed brushes, but he would include the brushes with the purchase of that motor. So, uh, I went ahead and opened up all the packages just to check everything to make sure everything was good. Uh, that everything was in there that was supposed to be. Uh, so, this is the motor for the beast. Let's see what we'll pull out first here. Uh, these are the brushes, actually. Uh, the brushes that he sent with them are... Trinity Epic motor, uh, yeah, Trinity Epic brushes. He apparently paid $4.99 for these brushes. Um, let's see, they're high silver, high power mod brushes, part number TRI 4383 EPNT. So, there's a part number for those brushes if you're looking for some. Uh, the motor that he sent, or that I purchased, is a Holmes Hobby. This is the Sport Crawlmaster 540 13 turn motor. Uh, I was told that this motor would be able to handle the 2.2s with the stock gearing. Uh, it's a 13 tooth pinion. Uh, not sure what spur gear it is. Uh, I'll have to look it up and I'll post it in the description below. Uh, but he said that this motor would be able to handle that. I you would just have to watch it to make sure that I didn't have to make any changes on it. Uh, the brushes that he said it needed, they don't look like they're in too bad a shape. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put those fresh brushes on just to make sure that this motor is running top notch when it goes in the beast. Uh, another thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to solder my motor leads uh, off of that motor onto this motor so it will be able to go in. Uh, I've had a Holmes Hobby motor in the past. It was the black labeled Holmes Hobby 540. I think it was the Pro Crawlmasters. Um, I actually run it in the beast for a little while was a good motor it just wasn't enough speed wheel speed for me so i snatched it out and uh dropped back down to that 27 turn uh found out why that 27 turn actually failed on me uh one issue is those motors really aren't designed to handle 2.2 tires all that well with that stock gear and i should have changed the gearing in it uh, another thing i found out was i actually was driving, noticed one of my front wheels wasn't spinning right. I tore out the front CVDs. As all you guys remember, the Beast had CVD front axles in it. I snatched those out, 
put the stock style axles for the AR60s, the dog bone style axles with the uh, drive cup for on the outside of the axles where it goes through the C-hub into the knuckle. Uh, put those on there because these were starting to go bad on me. They had a lot of slop in them, a lot of play where the pin goes through. So I decided to fix that before uh, on the beast before these went out on me. You know, and once these go out, you know, it's not going to work. So, uh, got that fixed. Still holding on to them just as a spare, just in case I need one. So, that's the parts for the Beast. Uh, parts for that Drift Kit uh, build series. I picked up a 15-turn brushed motor. It's a Horizon Hobbies Dynamite 15-turn brush seal can uh, part number DYN1172 for you guys who are wondering uh, this is the Firestorm 15 turn uh, just any of those sealed can uh, 15 turn motors you find on a lot of RTRs now uh, this is going to be the motor that I run in that kit I didn't want something like a brushless system to learn on because uh, it is the first time I've owned a kit of this nature uh, with these specific settings on it. Uh, I've owned other kits like or other RTRs like this in the past, just a little bit different. Um, electronics that are going to go with this motor, I've already got them set up. Uh, Traxxas XL5 ESC going to be running that Flysky GT3C controller got the receiver already hooked up for the time being because I don't have the servo I need to uh, put in there I'm just going to have to pull one of my spares off the parts wall and throw it in there I'm going to be using a HPI SX1 servo uh, not sure the specs on it. I will post those in the description below. This servo came out of the HPI RS4 uh, Evo Nitro car. Uh, it had two of these. It had one for the steering and one for the throttle and braking. So, not massive speed, not a whole lot of torque, uh, but it will help me get this kit going. So, uh, Final package I've got, once you guys see this, you'll kind of should know what type of kit I'm building. Uh, picked this up off of eBay. Guy had purchased it with the intent of buying the same kit that I purchased, but went another route with a different manufacturer. So he's selling all of the parts he ordered for that kit to fund that, um, that other chassis he decided to go with. Uh, part I'm talking about is a front one way for a belt driven drift car. Uh, there's only a few belt driven drift cars out there. Uh, you've got HPI's got one with their Sprint 2's. Uh, you've got MST's got a drift car. You've got Eagle. And you've got three racings. The four I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, three Racing just released that Secura D4, uh, the all-wheel drive and the uh, rear-wheel drive version. A few months back, I got looking at all the, the four choices on it, and I decided to go with something that kind of had a little bit better look than the HPI, uh, a little bit cheaper than the MST and the Eagles. I uh, went with a Secura D4 all-wheel drive. Got the pink Secura colored uh, front one way. And for you guys who don't know, Secura is Japanese for cherry blossom. So you've got this pinkish cherry blossom color, aluminum parts throughout the car uh, on the chassis. Uh, front one way, what it allows you to do is 
when you're drifting, if you tap the brakes, it lets the front wheels free spin, similar to a uh, e-braking effect on, a, say, a Nissan or a Toyota, something like that. So when you pull up on the e-brake, it locks your back tires up, but your front tires are still pulling, and what that'll allow you to do is pitch the rear end out and drift uh, with a lot of control. Uh, reason I didn't go with that rear wheel drive version, uh, really, I wanted something a little bit more controllable, uh, easy to learn on, where I didn't have to purchase a gyro. Uh, this is a counter steer car, um, so when you're drifting you're, and you're counter steering, the wheels are turning. We're on a 50 50 car. Uh, when you're drifting and you turn, it's basically. Whichever way you turn the front wheels, it's the way the car is going to go. With a counter steer car, if I'm correct and if I'm reading it correctly, um, you can drift with the wheels counter steer, you know, steered into it. So when you're drifting to the left, you got those wheels, you know, turned into it, and it's allowing that car to drift like that. It's a whole lot easier and a whole lot more realistic than with the 50/50s. Uh, now, I may be wrong, guys. Don't hold me to it. Uh, comment below with the information that you know on it. Take it easy on me because this is my first counter steer car. So, I'm not real familiar with how everything works on it. Uh, I do know that the cars are um, underdriven and overdriven on the gearing, just like with crawlers. I uh, will underdrive underdrive the front tires on these drift cars so it spins a little bit slower uh, where on a crawler we want to overdrive the front so it'll spin faster than the rears uh, with this this is actually i believe a 38 tooth uh gear so that's the stock gear and if i'm not mistaken on secures so there's the big kit build that we're going to be doing guys uh that secure d4 all-wheel drive should be in within the next couple of days uh gotta wait on it to come in from china we all know waiting on shipping from overseas is really long and drug drug out so whenever it gets in guys today's october 27th it's a tuesday uh when i'm filming this so um Whenever the kit comes in, guys, I'll post up a video of it, you know, unboxing, all of that, and then we'll kick off the build series uh, the next day or within the next couple of days after the kit comes in. I uh, don't have any real plans on how I'm going to do the build series, if I'm going to do it bag at a time or step-by-step uh, step, being one video, how we're going to do it now. Uh, but for this build series, and probably from now on, I've got you guys mounted on a higher platform, um, higher up on my tripod, so you're able to look down onto the workbench. I can zoom in onto the workbench, show you guys up close what I'm working on. I don't have to turn, hold the uh, whatever I'm working on over to the camera when I used to have it over here to my left, and it, you was looking over at the workbench. Looking down on it gives you a little bit better perspective of what I'm working on. So, uh, we're going to keep trying different spots to put the camera, you know, different ways of filming the show, just to make it a little bit better. Uh, I know you guys are probably wondering, where's the RCA, where's the uh, SC-10 your wife has, where's the helicopter, where's the, the little... Uh, iPhone Rover. Well, the SC10, my wife decided to sell. She didn't have time to race it. So we decided to sell that and we're going to get her something else. Don't know what we're going to get her yet. Uh, the RC8 is actually inside the house. I've got to get it tore down and cleaned up. We've got one points race left for the series um, at my track. And then we'll have just a couple of uh, special event races. And then that'll be it for the outdoor season uh, for 2015. So, uh, as all you guys know, I did sell the uh, 
Let's see if I can get it off of here. Well, I'll just grab one of the wings. Uh, I did sell the B4.2 uh, a while back. Guy and his son, they're loving it. They actually showed up and he drove it around at the track, trying to learn the buggy a little bit better. We'll see how it does, you know, how much he likes it. So that's gone. Um, the Beast is over here. The little iPhone Rover sitting over on the shelf. Helicopter conversion. Uh, I've basically put that on the back burner, guys. That's not looking like it's going to be an easy build because I've got to find the correct gearing for... Uh, Whenever I put those brushless motors on it, uh, I want to make sure I got the right pitch gear, whether it be a 32 or a 48 pitch gear, I got to make sure I've got that right pinion for it. Uh, and another thing I've got to find is some replacement parts, uh, like the rotors. I've got to get 40 rotors because the edges of these are kind of beat up. So we're going to have to look for those parts. So I've basically just decided to put that on the back burner and work on it as I find parts. Uh, been debating on doing a second winter build series uh, because when I'm not driving the beast out on the little crawler course I've got out by the creek, uh, decided to do a tear into NQD jet boat. For you guys who don't know what these boats are, Type it, in, type it in up in the search bar, Google it. It's NQD Tear Into. They're little small jet boats. You can do a brushless hobby grade conversion to them. 2S, 3S power. Awesome little boats. You can run them in real shallow creeks, uh, rivers, ponds, whatever you have around your house, you should be able to run them in. Uh, got the creek out behind my house. It's Depending on what area of the creek I put it in uh, is how deep it is, but the majority of the creek is deep enough to run that little boat. So we're probably going to go ahead and pick one up. They're only about 55 60 bucks online shipped. Uh, if I'm lucky to find one in stock somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I'll get it in whenever it comes in. Uh, do my research on what it takes to do the conversion on them. And we will go from there. So be looking out for that, guys. Uh, and also, the Beast is going to have a couple more uh, custom modifications to it. Uh, for you guys who don't know or who haven't seen it in the past videos, I've got this old F-350 body that I was building a truggy back half truck off of. Uh, still got some of that spare rod to build the rest of the cage with. I might go in and actually build a different stinger for the front bumper along with a exo cage for the G6 uh, Falcon Tire Jeep body that's on it right now. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out the Country Boys RC Facebook page all the latest news updates of what's going on in the shop when i'm at the track or out anywhere having fun with rcs i'll try to post pictures on facebook uh so you guys can see what's going on uh click on the subscribe button here on youtube so you can catch up with all the latest videos click on the like button if you enjoyed the video and we will see you guys on the next one hope you enjoyed it